coming up or it probably passed or actually when you watch this video It's probably already passed and it would have been May 16th I'm filming this a day before my actual birthday party and I think that's gonna be a two to three part video Depending on what you consider parts first one is gonna be decorations Which is this one there's gonna be a food version of like all the foods that I personally made And then the last one is gonna be like a behind-the-scenes vlog if I get enough footage But yeah, I'm so excited for this video and I'm so excited for tomorrow because it's themed white, pink, and gold, and I've always wanted a themed birthday since I was little. All the other kids got it because their parents are rich or something, I don't know, or their parents were willing to babysit a bunch of kids. I don't blame my parents for not giving me one because one, it can be expensive, but I actually saved a lot of money doing this because I chose really cheap things to make as decorations and you know, all that stuff. Not to mention, I would not want to take care of a bunch of kids and have a bunch of kids running around my house and potentially falling down the stairs or something. So I don't blame my parents for not giving me a themed birthday party. Ever since I'm an adult and I have a little bit of an income, I'm gonna make my dreams come true. <laughs> So in this video, I have decorations that I made for my birthday and I tried to make sure that they were all very cheap, very affordable, and very easy because I'm a very lazy person. <laughs> a lot of the things I used in this video are things that I already had or that I had to go out and buy. So in total for the decorations, I would say it was probably less than $50, though I have to say I probably had a lot of the things already so that made it easier for me. But nonetheless, these are all very cheap DIYs because I know you guys are probably on a budget and you guys are probably like me and you don't want to make decorations for one day when they're gonna go into the trash the next day. Actually, I'm not gonna throw out the flowers because they were too tedious to make, so I'm probably gonna keep them in my basement. It's gonna look so pretty with flowers everywhere. And I'm so excited to show you guys how to do this. But yeah, let's just get right into all of this decor. And of course, if you guys do want to see part two, then just check in the description box below because I think I'm going to be uploading them all in the same week just because that makes sense to me. Okay, so let's start off with the part that I was most excited about, which was the backdrop. And if you guys do want to see more pictures, please check out my blog post, which I will link down below, as well as my Instagram. For the flowers, we're going to make the daisy first. You're going to want six sheets of rectangular tissue paper of any color and one more smaller one for the center. I actually recycled and used my old pink packaging from Victoria's Secrets because I'm a grandma and I hoard stuff like that. But you're going to want to make sure they're as flat and aligned as possible. Now rotate the pile so the shorter end is facing you and fold a 1-2 to two inch flap forward and make sure the crease is very crisp. So if you have to, use your nail and really make that fold noticeable. Take that flap and fold it backwards and make sure that crease is super crisp again. Then take those folds and fold it back forward. Keep repeating this until you get to the end. You basically just want to make your folds a zigzag. Now let the folds loosen up and remove the smaller tissue paper keeping it folded. Fold the tissue paper in half to find the center and, taking some sharp scissors, cut some slits into the open ends. Undo the most recent fold you made and slip the tissue paper back in place with the larger sheets. This is definitely the most tedious part of this whole thing. Fold everything back together and then fold it in half to find the center just like you did previously. Now taking any sort of string or stapler, whatever you prefer, secure the middle tightly. I left a lot of string just in case I want to hang these, but I mean, feel free to trim it off if you want. With your scissors, cut your desired petal shape on both ends. I cut the same shape for all my flowers because I wanted them to look pretty similar. Save your scraps because we will need it later for confetti. Now just spread the folds. Don't worry about the two halves not being connected, you don't notice when it's fluffed at all. This is the final and fun part, it's where your flowers really transform. Take each individual sheet of paper and pull it upwards and into the center. It's okay if it gets crinkled or ripped, trust me, you won't really be able to tell at the end. And then just fluff or unfluff any parts you want to get your desired look. You can really customize these flowers either by fluffing it more, fluffing it less, changing the petals, changing the colors. It's really just doing whatever you want. And this is the second flower variation that we made. 
Following the same steps previously, take six sheets of paper, fold it up in a zigzag, secure it with string, and cut the petals. The only difference here is that I didn't include the smaller tissue paper in the middle, so essentially this is the easier variation. To hide the bare center, I made sure to scrunch each sheet towards the center more than the previous flower to make it look like a pom-pom. Pretty much just play with the fluffing until you're happy with this and you're done! And for putting it all together, I taped a pink plastic tablecloth from the dollar store onto the fence. You can hang it instead if you'd like or use different colored tape. I just used the painter tape that I already had. Make sure you have an abundance of flowers and balloons that you've made previously. I used packaging tape to secure the flowers onto the tablecloth, but you can always hang them instead to avoid damaging them. Just have fun with it! I also knew I most likely wasn't going to have enough flowers to fill the backdrop, so I added balloons to complete the wall. To add to the photo booth, I obviously needed some props, duh, so I made quite a few. I made these with construction paper, but if you want a more permanent solution, use bristol board, foam, or cardboard instead. I pretty much just free-handed cutting a lot of the props using inspiration from Pinterest or quick Google searches using keywords similar to photo booth props. I did also choose to add outlines to everything to make it look more cartoony and bold using sharpies. You can use paint markers or paint by itself if you'd like as well. I even chose to laminate some speech bubbles with packaging tape to make them erasable with whiteboard markers. This way it's more customizable and fun. Majority of these should be able to be held up with popsicle or shish kebab sticks alone, however if you're using a flimsy paper you may need to reinforce it with a cardboard backing or in my case, the hard way, popsicle sticks. I also added an old glass picture frame into the props from an old DIY video that I spray painted gold for another erasable sign. Comment down below if you do remember this. And then the last photo booth prop is a giant Polaroid photo frame that I made with a $2 phone board from the dollar store. I sketched out the shape that I want to cut out using an etching from a toothpick, or you could use a pencil or pen instead if you want on the back as well. Then taking a knife and cutting board to protect your surface, cut out the shape. I used a book of papers to keep my lines straight, but you can use a ruler instead. Then just pop out the center and clean up the edges with scissors or the knife again. And then after that, you are done. Next up that I made was the centerpiece for the table. Remember the scraps that I said to save? This is where they all come in. Cut them up into small pieces. I originally thought that cutting them up in a jar would be easier, but it's really not. So just take them out and cut it up individually. I was so obsessed with how the confetti looked. But when you're done, scoop it all up and put it on the side for now just so it doesn't get everywhere. Now you'll need some type of vase or jar. I used a fishbowl from the dollar store that I bought last year and found some foam from a cut-up swimming noodle that fit inside. This will allow us to stick stuff in it and have it stand up. The green really didn't match my theme, so I wrapped it up with some double-sided tape and tissue paper. You can choose to paint it instead or just buy a noodle the color of your theme, but this was the easiest option in my opinion. Now just stuff the foam back into the vase. I did also use some tissue paper to help stabilize it. For the gold numbers, I sketched out the numbers 2 and 3 on separate foam sheets. Feel free to use Google or a Word doc as a template or inspiration. You can tell by all my sketch marks that I'm really bad at making numbers and letters look good. I just don't write cute at all. Then just take a pair of scissors and cut out the numbers. Taking another foam sheet, glue the number on, as well as with a shish kebab stick sticking out. We will be using that to stand the letter up. This will also help with adding more shape, stability, and making the paint job easier because we won't have to use extra paint layers to cover up all the terrible sketch marks. When everything is secure, just take a pair of scissors again and cut out the number. And finally, because I want gold to be an accent color, I'm painting these numbers gold. Make sure you get the sides as well because you do not want to forget that. And this may also take quite a few coats, especially if your paint isn't very opaque. <laughs> when your numbers are nice and dry, it's time to assemble the entire thing. Just remember that when you're arranging things and sticking them in, that you are using a pool noodle so the middle is quite empty and if you do want things to stand up, don't put it in there. 
I will admit I suck at flower arrangements, so I played around and then ended up letting my friend Jessica do it in the ends. But basically she added white flowers and spread them out. Then she added confetti all around the sides to make it more colorful and as well to help stand up the pool noodle. She also added a gold ribbon around the vase. And then we made mini tissue paper flowers to add on top. And then that's pretty much it for the centerpiece. Next up are the drinking cups, which is actually super duper simple. All you really need are six plastic wine glasses. I just got these from the dollar store and they are cheaper at the dollar store than Party City. The quality is a little less, we're not so great as Party City, but I mean it works for what I was trying to do. I want my paint lines to be as clean as possible, so I'm using painter's tape to avoid getting paint in areas I want to avoid. After a while, I did find that using small pieces of tape worked better than one long piece, as you can see. And now using some gold paint, also from the dollar store, paint the bottom. This will take quite a few coats as well. If necessary, use some Mod Podge or white liquid glue to seal it off. My paint actually dries plastic-like, so I skipped it. You can also choose to spray paint it if you'd like, just make sure that you don't get any on the rim or inside because obviously, people will be drinking out of these and you don't want to get them sick. I also thought that gold glitter would be nice as well, but I was on a budget, so that was out of the question. When the paint is completely opaque on the cup and dry, just peel off the tape and you are pretty much done. If you want to be a little bit more extra, you can also add little balls of cotton candy inside, which I thought was a really cute idea that I saw on Pinterest. I was gonna do that, except my cotton candy machine broke day of, so that was uh, not an option. Speaking about extra, I know these water bottles were totally unnecessary, but I did it anyways. Taking your water bottles of choice, remove the labels. And now just glue or double-sided tape the doilies onto the sticky side of the bottle. I have for some reason had a bunch of these lying around, don't ask me why. Now measure how much gold ribbon you need, trim it, and then add some double-sided tape to it. Wrap the ribbon around using it to hold down the ends of the doily. And now you're pretty much done, you're just as extra as I am. Now what if someone brings over some food that's not aesthetically pleasing or it just doesn't match with your theme? This is how you can also be extra. I mean, you could probably buy these flags at the store already made, but I already had the materials and they can be kind of expensive sometimes, so I decided to make them. Taking some ribbon, measure out how much you need and just trim it off. Now if you have washi tape, this would work a lot better, but I had every single color washi tape except pink, so I had to use ribbon. And now taking your glue of choice, which for me is always glue gun, and then add a dollop of glue, put your toothpick in the middle, and squish the two halves together. And then just take a pair of scissors and cut your shape of choice, which for me is a triangle, and you're pretty much done. So easy. And finally we have the marbled sugar cookie, and I know this video has been long, I'm so sorry. For the icing, mix 1 4th teaspoon of vanilla extract with 2 teaspoons of water. Use clear extract if you want it to be more white. Now just take 1 cup of powdered sugar or icing sugar and sift it. I learned from my donuts video that you have to sift it or else it's going to make it real clumpy, so make sure you do that and even use a spoon if it helps. Now add the previous mixture in as well as 2 teaspoons of corn syrup and then just mix it all together. At this point, it might be a little thick so you can add as much water as you want, but I found that about 1 teaspoon or 1 bottle cap full of water was good enough. Now scoop some of the icing and put it in a different bowl and add some coloring of your choice. I'm just using some red icing because I wanted it to be pink and, you know, it's, it's my theme. If you don't want to waste icing, make sure that you do this in a shallow bowl. But anyways, just take the pink and kind of sprinkle it on and then just taking any standard cookie, dip it in, make sure that all sides are covered. Maybe not the edges, well that's, that's wholly up to you. But then lift it up and let it drip. You can use a knife if it helps to clean it up. Another alternative is to use some toothpicks just so you can swirl it in and get different looks. And you know, just keep dipping sugar cookies until you're done with everything. You might need some more icing, it depends on how big your sugar cookies are and how big your batch is, but you can always keep remaking it. 
I would also recommend you drying them on a baking rack with a pan or parchment paper under so the icing can drop off and not make a mess. It'll also help to go in with a toothpick again while the icing is still wet and clean the edges off more. When your cookies are completely dry, it's time to package them. I use cellophane bags that I found from Bulk Barn. Insert the cookies, preferably not with the seam facing the front like I did here. And then taking some ribbon, tie a double knot. I also went in with a fabric ribbon and tied a bow. Then using scissors, I cut out little triangles at the end to make it look more cute and refined. And finally, using scissors again, I'm just going to curl up to the plastic ribbon so it's super duper curly. And you're pretty much done with these party favors. I hope you guys really liked this video and don't forget to check out my blog if you want to see more pictures and information. But if you guys did, make sure you give me a big thumbs up. Let me know down below what type of theme that I should think about for my next birthday. And I will see you guys very soon. Bye!